we'll begin our worship service. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. Father, so many, so many that we can't even count, that we can't even think of the blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. Father, I, I ask you now that you continue those blessings this morning as we lift up our worship to you. Father, as we break the bread of your word, Father, you will move our hearts in the way and the likeness of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray this morning that if there's any spirit not of the Holy Spirit in this place, Father, that you will remove it. Father, that you will settle hearts. Father, that you will put peace in their hearts so that they can lift up praises and they can hear your word. Father, move any distraction that may be distracting someone right now, that goes for at home as well. Father, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I see a lot of faces that were involved in Bible school. I'm not going to get you to raise your hand, but I know who you are. So this song, there's no reason we don't fill this place with, with uh, worship this morning. Because I know you know the words, you learned them in Bible school. So stand with us and let's worship.
song that's been in my head we sang a couple of weeks ago and the title of it was I'm going to see a victory love the song it's just one of those that got in my head and this week couldn't shake it so we're going to do it again because it's been in my head first John 5 starting in verse 3 this is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world this is the victory that has overcome the world even our faith who is it that overcomes the world only he who believes that Jesus is the son of God Amen. let's sing <laughs>
service up to you. We lift this service up to you. We lift everything that's said and done in this place today. All for your glory, Father. Lord, I pray that you're changing our hearts and minds already. Just through the, through the music, Lord, and the worship. Lord, Lord, you are worthy of the worship. Lord, I ask you to bless our Bible study and Wow. You got your Bibles, turn to Galatians chapter 3. Dave did not lie to me this morning. He said, Pastor, it's going to be a good morning. It's going to be a good day. Man, it has started out wonderful, no doubt. Galatians chapter 3, uh, we'll begin in the first verse. Well, I ask if you would stand out of reverence to the reading of God's holy, infallible, inerrant, authoritative word. It says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Christ was publicly betrayed and was as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, do you do so by works of law? Or by hearing with faith. Just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him righteousness. Know then that those of faith who are the sons of Abram and the scripture foreseeing that God who justified the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed among, along with Abraham, the man of faith. Let's pray. Father God, we just ask you now to continue to be with us. Father, we thank you for us allowing to lift up the praises to you, the praises that you deserve. Father, I now ask you that you bless this reading. Father, you say your word will not come back void, and Father, we stand upon that promise. Father, as we read, as we look at your word, Father, open our hearts, give us ears to hear and hearts of clay. Father, as always, I ask you to remove me from this place. Father, that your word will be spoken, not mine. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, but I do this a lot, uh, especially when I hear some things on the internet or on TV or even some people that I know. Have you ever thought, really? Did that just come out of your mouth? Did you just do that? Did you just act that way? Am I the only one? Surely I'm not the only one. Because I see some of these people today and they say something and I just, I am baffled. I am baffled by the ignorance of some people. I'm baffled by the way some things are portrayed. And if we look at Galatians chapter 3, and Paul had started this church. Paul had preached the gospel. Paul had reached to them uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had reached this church. He had started this church, and it was based on a foundation. Uh, who wants a victory this morning? Amen. Amen. Woo. Boy, that was good. I got some response out of that one. So who do you build your life on? 
the other song, by the way. Who you build your life on? Jesus. Do you build it upon what you think you can do in your abilities, in your education, or in well, what maybe you can accomplish? No, we build it upon our faith in Jesus Christ. And we follow him. We follow his direction. This title of this morning's sermon, if you call it that, Trust Issues Lead to Truth Issues. Trust issues lead to truth issues. You see, when we look at the very first part of verse three, of verse, of chapter 3, it says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Paul looks at them like they have lost their mind. Paul looks at them like, I've told you the truth. I've given you the truth. Yet you do not trust the one in whom you say you believe. So that means that if we don't trust him, then we have truth issues. Because if we don't trust him, we won't stand upon his truth. Y'all with me this morning? Okay, just making sure. We live by faith when we believe Christ in every moment of every day. When we do not waver, when we do not faint, when we stand strong upon him, we walk by faith in every moment of every day. When we do not, even in our Southern Baptist Convention and even some of the preachers who call themselves Southern Baptists, I look at them sometimes and I go, what? Do you truly believe that? You know, seminary teachers won't tell you what they believe. I beg some of my professors to tell me what they believe. They won't tell you. They'll just tell you what the book says. Hmm, amen. That's kind of hard, isn't it, Jason? They won't tell you. Which is a good thing in some ways because you got to decide for yourself on who you build your faith. You don't want to build it on a seminary teacher, do you? No, we want to build it on the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, which was done. It says, are you, do you have the mentally, mental capacity to understand that you are walking away from the faith? That's what he's saying here. You, oh, you foolish Galatians. Do you even have the mental capacity to understand that you are walking away what sets you free? You see, when I look at church today, when I look at a lot of people in church today, I want to look at them and say, oh, you foolish people who call yourselves Christians, do you even have the mental capacity to understand that you're living a life of Satan, not a life of glory in Jesus Christ? You say you believe in Jesus Christ. You say you do those things, but yet you live a total different life. Oh, you foolish Christians. Mm, which begs the question, are they truly Christians? I saw on the internet yesterday that a, a, a children's book writer, Christian children's book writer, now has decided to come out of the closet and divorce his wife. That's one of those moments you go, huh? Really? At what point did you quit trusting Jesus for your life? That's exactly what he's saying here. At what point did you quit trusting Jesus? You see, when we quit trusting him, we quit standing on the truth. Do we even have the mental capacity? He says, who has bewitched you? You see, back then they believed in a lot of witchcraft and those things. And Paul says, surely someone hadn't come along and given you the evil eye to make you wane from what you believe. Surely you will stand upon the truth, but yet you act like you haven't. He said, I even put it up as a billboard. Look at the rest of it. It says, it was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly betrayed as crucified. Those words in there mean that he was put on a placard, the placard of a cross, the placard of a billboard saying that Jesus came to this earth. He left heaven. He stepped out of glory. He stepped upon the earth so that we may have life and have it through him and through his blood. The gospel of Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. And I was lost until I met him face to face. Without Jesus, we are nothing. Without Jesus, it is foolishness. He said, I put it on a placard before you. 
There's not a person that has come in this church or many churches that Jesus hadn't been put on a placard on a billboard and said, he is the only thing that can save you. He is the only thing that can give you peace in this troubled world. And y'all, this troubled world is crazy. And I'm not just talking about the things that maybe we want to jump on politics. I'm saying that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, if I can say that. And without Jesus, it's getting there faster. The basket's starting to burn. I worry about my children. I, I, I'm lucky I have two of my grandchildren here today. I, I worry about my children. I worry about my grandchildren. And am I the man of God that I should be to be the example in front of them, in front of my children, in front of them? Am I the person of Jesus Christ? Have I turned from the truth of Jesus Christ? Have I quit trusting in him and what he has for us? I look around the church and I see people who have quit trusting God, who have quit trusting the providence of God, the strength of God, the power of God, the love of God, and the grace of God. That's exactly what they walked away from. Y'all, the church is walking away from it today. Until we start being the people of God and start acting and trusting in God, then it's going to continue to happen. I fear for the world. There will be a day that will come before the judgment seat of God. What will you hear? Good, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. Or will you hear? Get thee away from me, you doer of iniquity. You never knew me. Does that not, especially in our day and time, does that not bother you? Does that not bother you as Christians? To think that your life is an example before someone else and that your life should be lived in such a way that it should point to the cross of Jesus Christ. We have become foolish in our mental capacity to understand that we hold in our hand, if we call ourselves Christians, life and death. You say, well, what do you mean? I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not a doctor either. But I tell you one thing, that if I can give you Jesus Christ, I can give you life. You say, well, they still die. Yeah, but you know what? The moment I close my eyes here, the moment I open mine in the presence of Jesus. And guess what? It'll be a whole lot better up there. I'll hear a whole lot more amens than I do in here. Oh, foolish Galatians, have you been bewitched? I think the church has been bewitched. I really do. I, I believe we have been bewildered, bewitched, uh, confused. Just add whatever you want to in there. Yet we see on the billboards of our churches, we see on the billboards of our Bibles, we see on the billboards of the things around the world, we see Jesus as a placard, as a billboard saying, turn to me, come to me. You know that I am the only way, the, the one and only way to the Father, God. Trust in me. We have lost our trust in Jesus Christ. He says, I, I just want to ask one question. You know, sometimes I just want to ask one question. Amen about questions. Let me ask only one this. You only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Hmm. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 16, it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, the law, doesn't matter how many laws you keep, if you know Jesus, you're still going to hell. If you don't know Jesus, you're still going to hell. You can keep every law there is, but if you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. You can be a good man all day long or a good woman all day long, but if you don't know Jesus, you're going to hell. And that frightens me. As a Christian, that frightens me. We did not receive the spirit of the world, but the spirit from whom God, uh, from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God, that we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. It's not enough 
just to say, I believe, we must walk in that belief. The spiritual things that is taught to us, we, we didn't get the spirit of the world, we got the spirit of God. Yet, we have trust issues in that same spirit. I have a question that I want to answer, or that I want to ask, you don't have to answer it, because I know it in my own life, but has there ever been a time in your life that you trusted God for something and he did not deliver? Mm. Not one. Y'all, that, mm, that should make us want to shout. Knowing that we have a God who stands upon his promises, who gives us the assurance of the blood of Jesus Christ, and that can change a life in an instant from death to life. So where do we get our salvation? Our salvation comes to, from Jesus Christ. Our salvation comes from our belief in who Jesus is. That we put our faith in him, that we put our trust in him. We have trust issues. And looking around the church, I understand why we have trust issues. But let me ask you this, or let me just say this. If you come to church because of the pastor, the music minister, a Sunday school teacher, a youth minister, or a children's minister, you have come to church for the wrong thing. Do I need to say that again? You have come to church for the wrong thing. You see, it baffles me that when a pastor leaves, half of the church goes with him. Why did you come to the church to start with? Because of the pastor or because you love Jesus? You see, we have trust issues. We don't trust God to get us out of one problem into another. We don't trust God to lead us through the valley. Yet he says he will never leave us nor forsake us. He said he will walk with us in the fire. He's in the fire. Right there beside us. Oh, foolish Christians, you cannot work your way to heaven. It is only through your faith and trust in Jesus Christ that you can get to heaven. I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again this week. We need to get out of politics and get into the gospel. We need to start sharing the gospel. The gospel is the only thing that's going to change the world. Politics won't. And the politics never was designed to change the world. The gospel was, though. Now, I have my own opinion about the politics. I have my own opinion about those things. And that's all right. You do too. We may agree. We may disagree. But there's one thing that we all need to agree on, that the gospel is the utmost important thing that we should agree on. And that sharing of the gospel should be it. So that people hear it, not only so that people hear it, so that people will believe it. God did through the Spirit what we cannot or can't, or won't do in the flesh. You see, Jesus died on the cross, walked out of that grave so that we may have life. I, I may have my facts wrong, but I vaguely remember this from a seminary class. Talking about the veil that was torn. That veil was so thick and so strong and woven so good that if my memory serves me correct, that 700 horses could not rip the veil. So, Y'all imagine that. 700 horses standing on each side could not rip that veil. Yet God, by one word, ripped it from the top to the bottom. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't think God could handle it? Have you ever been in a situation in your life to think that I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I, I'm going to trust God, I'm going to trust what he's going to do? You see, he is the overcomer of any issue, any problem. He is the overcomer of the world. He came, he tore the veil from him to us, not us to him. That's what it says here. We are not of the spirit of the law, but we are the spirit of God. And God tore that veil, I didn't. He ripped it right down the middle so that I will have a way 
to him. We need to stand on that truth. He said, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? You know, I also I often think that I can do this to God. Just let me handle it. I got this. I don't need your help with this. I got it. Don't worry about it. Y'all ever been that way? Well, let me tell you how you've been this way, because I know you have been this way. I know everybody in this building has been this way, because we don't pray about it, we don't ask, we don't seek, we don't find, because we don't seek the face of Jesus, because we don't trust him with our issues in our life. We don't trust him with our problems. We don't trust him with our, our not our problems, but we, tr we don't trust him with our happy times. We don't trust him at all. And until we get back to trusting him, we won't stand upon the truth of the gospel. You see, trust leads to truth issues. We want revival to break out. We've got to start trusting God that he will. Who's trusting him with me? I ain't talking about just this church. I'm talking about all over this nation because this whole nation needs it. But it needs to start somewhere. Y'all want to start it right here? You know where it starts? Right here. On our knees before holy God. You see, I can't make my faith any better. I can always make it worse when I think I can do it. He says, having begun this spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Are you thinking that because you're getting uh, circumcised that you're now part of the family of God? No, it is by faith in Jesus Christ that makes you the family of God. Does it matter whether you live in Parker's Chapel? Does it matter if you live in Junction City? Does it matter if you live in El Dorado? Does it matter if you have money or if you have not? No, it does not matter. All that matters is that you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you become a member of of God's family. And that is all you need to know. There is no status. There is one family. My flesh cannot make me any better than I am right now. But Jesus can. Verse 4, he said, did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? You say you believed in Jesus Christ. You say that you, you walked with him. You say that you have stood up for him. But was all that in vain? Are you now turning back to the world? I look at our Christianity today, and I look at what we call Christianity today, and it doesn't look anything like what the Bible says it is. It's Americanized. Because it's about the comforts of this world. How many of y'all know I like air conditioning? It's hot up here. Let me just say that. At Pentecost. At Pentecost. Thousands of people were standing in the heat just to hear God's word. Now we get mad because the carpet's green, the walls are white, and the air is set on 65. Why is that? Because the flesh has taken over. God no longer reigns because we don't trust him. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, do you so by the works of the law or by the hearing of the faith? When do we see things move? When we see God's power move, when do we see those things? It's not because people work around here. And I'm going to tell you all, there's a lot of people that work around here from Monday to Sunday. There's a lot of people who do a lot of things around here. We are blessed as a church. But I really don't think they do them because they think they're working their way to heaven. I think they do them because they've been blessed by God. That they know where that favor comes from. It's not from the people of this church. It's from God. They know where their relationship is. It is from God. Verse 14 of, 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 of Ezekiel, it says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit, 
for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but, he, but is himself to be judged by no one. For, for who has to understand the mind of the Lord so as to instruct? But we have the mind of Christ. We must live in the Spirit. We must walk in the Spirit. Romans chapter 9, verse 11, 9 through 11, chapter 8, verse 9 through 11, it says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, all the, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit of life because of the righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give you life. Boy, that's something to shout about. The same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead gives me life. That's the gospel, amen. I should be able to trust Him, shouldn't I? I, I love Dr. Mayfield. And I love all our health uh, peoples. And I trust Dr. Mayfield when it comes to medical issues. And several others in this church. But I don't trust him with one thing. And that's my eternal salvation. You can trust people on this earth all day long. And some should be trusted. But you must trust the Lord first over everything. Now they're going to kick me. I got a mask coming. Believe it or not, I do have one coming. My wife ordered it for me. For me. Notice she ordered it for me. I didn't order it for myself. But on the front of it, it says, faith, not fear. It's not until we walk back into the faith of Jesus Christ and begin to trust him that we will see our lives turned around, that we will see our church turned around, that we will see our county turned around, that we will see our country turned around. It's time for the Christians to stand up and start preaching and living the gospel. I often wonder, from heaven, God from his throne looks at me sometimes and goes, really? Really? Now, I know he doesn't, but I often wonder in my own life when I quit trusting him, he goes, really? I've brought you through everything you've ever been through. I've never left you. You can't do it. Just let me. Trust me. Trust me. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him righteousness, Genesis chapter 15, verse 16, it says that because of his faith that God put upon him righteousness. You see, it wasn't until Genesis chapter 17 that God made a covenant with him with circumcision. Now I want to say something to that. So by Abraham's faith in God, it was accounted to him righteousness. So by my faith in God, it counts to me as righteousness, right? I'm saved through faith in Jesus Christ, right? Not by the works I do, but by the trust I have in Jesus. You see, because it wasn't until chapter 17 in Genesis that circumcision was required. Now, if we trust God, we're going to do what he asks us to, right? Let me get back over here. If we trust God, we're going to do what he asks us to, right? Hmm. Then let me ask you another question. Do we trust him? There's a lot of holes in this room. 
I'm thankful for every person sitting here, but there's a lot of holes in this room. I'm wondering if there's a lot of people out there that don't trust him. It's not by works, it's by faith. Even in Abraham, it was by faith, not by works. Know then that those of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the description, foreseeing that God was justified by the Gentiles, the Gentiles, by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abram, saying, And you shall all the nations be blessed. Abraham trusted God. Abraham trusted God so much and so hard that he was willing to sacrifice his own son on the altar so that it would please God, so that it would bring God glory. Do we trust him that much? Because that's what is required. I know some of y'all, that's hard to hear. But that's what is required. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Faith and trust go together. If we do not trust, we have truth issues. Because the truth is, we must trust in Jesus Christ. I want to read one more scripture to you. Proverbs chapter 3. If I can get this thing to go away. Verse 4 through 6. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and of man. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. I truly believe that this is what Paul is trying to tell the Galatians, to trust in the Lord with all their heart. Do not lean on what the Judaizers, the judge, the law, and those things. Trust in the Lord. But you see, there's a second part of that, and that's in verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Stand up for the truth. Mm. I don't know of another word. I, I probably should, and I probably should look it up in the dictionary before I, I say this, but we need Christians to quit being weak. I'm going to use that word, weak, and start being strong in truth. Too many times Christians cower down in all your ways acknowledge him when you're at work when you're at home when you're at play whenever wherever you are we should acknowledge him people should see christ in us he goes on to make a promise in that and he will make straight your paths as we walk with christ as we trust christ with our life he promises to make our path straight. We must trust and obey. That's the only way, is to trust and obey. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I thank you this morning that you love us, that you care for us. Father, help us to trust you. Help us to, uh, Father, fall upon you in troubled times and hard times. Father, when it seems that there is no way out, Father, we know that we can trust you. We know that we can walk with you. Father, help us to quit doing it our own way. Help us to start doing it your way. Help us to realize that regardless of how good we are, how much we've been trained, or whatever that might be, Father, that it still does not trump your goodness. It still does not trump your truth. Father, we just ask you now, as you already have, to take over this invitation. But Father, if there's someone in this room that has questions, Father, if there's someone in this room that has trust issues, if there's someone in this room who lacks the fortitude to stand and trust, 
Father, I pray that today will be the day that you change everything in their life. Father, for those who are watching, those who are online, Father, they need to know that they can call, they can contact Father. We'll be glad, Father, to walk them through a plan of salvation. We'll be glad to pray with them. We'll be glad to lift them up. care where they come from. We don't care what they look like. Father, because you didn't care what I looked like or where I came from. The day you tapped me on the shoulder and called me to trust you. Father, help us to trust and obey. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stand. Start a fire. take your last breath, there's always a chance to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's always time, but that time is coming short to put your faith and trust in Him. This morning is a happy day, but yet a sad day. I brought two chairs right down here, and I'm going to ask Katie and Jason if they'll come fill them. We are losing a children's minister, but gaining a missionary. And today we want to commission Katie to be a missionary of this church. To leave out of this church and teach these children about Jesus Christ in the best way she can. Matthew Chapter 28, we see the Great Commission. 
Verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Katie, God is with you to the end of the age. In your missionary journey, I'm going to ask if they will be seated. And I'm going to ask any ordained man to come up front, Brock, you, and the kids come line up behind them. Mama, you come on. Dad, come on. I ask that our deacons lay a hand on them or lay a hand on the person in front of you. I have a two-fold prayer warrior up to here this morning. Not only is Leon the chairman of the deacons, but he's dad. And I think it appropriate that he lead us in a word of prayer. Mr. Leon. Now, if you're not afraid, and they're not afraid, I want you to come give them the right hand of fellowship and tell them you'll be praying for them, love on them. So let's do that. Can y'all play something? Oh, wait a minute. I take that back. We got one more song. I almost forgot. Wow. And I even asked her to do this. So y'all be seated a minute. Katie, this is especially for you. Jason, sit down. Don't move. Nah. Nope. Come back. The family can stay up here if they want to. <laughs> Y'all listen to these words, and this is what we wish for them. The Lord bless you. 